What do you know about this? Not much. So you've never seen this before? You don't know anything about Third Eye? Well, I don't remember seeing it now. You don't recognize any of the symbols on it? No, sorry. Aha. Ryan, you've just told me all about the moon symbols on the mask. Then you're claiming you don't know anything about the symbols on the flyer. It's all the same thing. Oh, actually, yes. Sorry, yes. Yes, I do remember that. So what did you know about Third Eye? Oh, not much, really. Never came into contact with them. That explanation was way too short. Ryan's definitely hiding something. Flyer, this Third Eye group was based at the Village Hall, is that right? Was it? And that's where you were based, wasn't it? Um, yeah, you said you invented the Atlas phrase, free to be free, while you were based at the Village Hall. So I did. So you must have come into contact with Third Eye at some point. You were using the same hall. Well, I'm afraid I haven't been entirely honest with you, Inspector. Go on. You see, Third Eye, Third Eye is, or was, Atlas under a different name. Sorry. Atlas is Third Eye? In a new improved form, yes. And you ran Third Eye? With Dad, yes. So you must have known Liam. You didn't just meet him, did you? Yes, I knew him, Inspector, but don't get your hopes up. All of this has been thoroughly investigated and cleared up. You've been investigated about his death? They dropped the case. We didn't have anything to do with it. Well, when I say dropped the case, I mean, a police investigation is one thing, but what the public thinks is another. They threatened to go public, and then James Bloody Wilson started distributing his flyers, and that was it. No choice. It was an enter. You had to change the name. We'd already paid the family an out-of-court settlement. We thought that was an enter. But then James, his cronies, they wouldn't leave it alone. So we had to close down, buy a new place, rebrand, so eventually we reopened here. As Atlas? As Atlas. And it worked? Uh, up till now, yes. So you knew James Wilson too? We knew James, but he didn't know us as such. Oh, he was very quick to shoot us down, but he didn't do anything like actually coming to the course to see what he was about. So James wouldn't know that you were now running Atlas. Not unless he came to one of our courses. And how much of all that stuff was true? ECT machines, brainwashing. <laughs> I'm afraid that that exists only exclusively in the mind of Mr. Wilson. All we do is make better business people. We challenge their prejudices and presumptions. Why don't you come along and see for yourself? The course starts in 15 minutes. Excuse me, Inspector. Hello. I can't come back now. Well, you have my car at the moment. All right. All right. See you later. Uh, that was Dad. I, I have to go back. You can come and meet him if you like. Well, I might come and have a chat. Come with me. To be honest, Dad's a great businessman, but he lacks imagination. He does, however, believe in the power of the individual, when taught by the right teacher, of course. Ryan! In here. Just coming. He's through here. To 
whom do I owe the pleasure? Detective Inspector Jenks. I am investigating a death in the village. I believe you knew Kate Vine. Oh, I thought all this was dealt with, Inspector. You do know that Kate Vine was a gherkin short of a big mat. You do know. Father. You must forgive my son, Inspector. He still can't summon up the courage to come straight to the point. So what do you want to know? Well, a few more questions, if you don't mind. But I do mind. I'm a very busy man. Try asking an intelligent question. Like, do I mind being quizzed about a once promising student who turned into a useless drunk? Ryan, would you mind leaving us for a while? I'll go back to the centre. I have uh, one or two things to prepare. Um, call me if you need me dead. You may begin, Mr. Holmes, although I'm not going to be able to help you. I don't have much to do with the course nowadays, so I can't give you any hard information. That's as maybe, but we No, need... that's as is. But if you want my opinion, I'd be quite happy to give it to you. So, uh, far away. Okay. Thank you. Wow, Paul certainly doesn't take any prisoners. It's obvious who's pulling the strings in this family. And I wonder what they got up to in their previous guise as third eye. Eight o'clock already. What do you know about this? So you've been graced with Goebbels' company already, have you? James, our local minister for propaganda. I suppose Ryan already told you all about our actual previous incarnation. He explained, yes. Did he tell you anything scandalous? Not unless you count the suicide. Well, these things happen. Was it your idea? The suicide? Third eye. Yeah, I suppose it was. As my son had started to atrophy, I decided I ought to give him something to do. And Third Eye was the same as Atlas, teaching business skills. Very similar. So Liam's death didn't prompt you to make any changes? There was nothing we could do about Liam's death, Inspector, any more than we could do anything about Kate's. It was out of our control. You can't blame me for wondering, Paul. Two student deaths in two years. It's called a coincidence, Inspector. I expect they had fast food also. But you're not investigating all the local chippies, are you? How well did you know Kate? Hardly knew her at all. Uh, met her a few times. But the course, that's about all. So when was the last time you saw her? Last uh, Friday. I just popped out of the course and... Uh, about seven. Did you speak to her then? It's possible. And how did she seem? Was she happy, sad, preoccupied? She was drunk. Do you know if Kate had lost this? It's her driving licence. How would I know that? You didn't see it lying around anywhere? No. Did you know anything about Simon Thompson's bike? No. Ever tried Simon's homebrew? Simon Thompson? No, I haven't. I wouldn't touch anything that has had Simon's fingers in it. Have you seen this before? Looks familiar. Where did you find it? It was uh, in the woods. Presumably had something to do with Kate or... A killer. Well, that's what I'm trying to establish. Shouldn't it be in an evidence bag, Inspector, in case of contamination? I didn't have one with me, unfortunately. Well, don't go testing it for DNA, will you? It's got yours all over it. What do you know about this? It's a freedom necklace. It's a symbol we use um, sometimes on the courts. 
little bird in the cage flying away. Uh, freeing themselves from their past is the analogy. So do they get them when they join the course or something? No, 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 not as a rule. I think I bought one once as a present. Oh, not uh, for Kate, by any chance? <laughs> no, not for Kate. I can't really remember who it was for, a birthday present maybe for one of the students. Which student? I've no idea. What do you know about this? Looks like a mask. You don't recognise it? Not particularly. Looks like a monarch mask. What's a monarch mask? Monarch is a fancy dress. Outfitters. Ryan goes there sometimes. Could you tell me a bit about this? Had it designed by an agency. Hmm. And when was that? Last year. Is that when you started the business? Yes, I suppose so. Have you ever seen one of these before? I believe it's a... Scrying mirror, pagan thing. Ever used one? Why would I use a scrying mirror? So you have no interest at all in this sort of thing? No. Does the Atlas course use them at all? Not at all. Strange question. What did you hear about an argument in the pub last Friday? I didn't go to the pub last Friday. You didn't hear anything about an argument in the pub? Should I have? No, that's fine. If I did this, would it mean anything to you? I presume you've seen an Atlas student doing that. Ah, so this is an Atlas thing. Well, it wasn't exactly our idea. The students started doing it spontaneously to show commitment to the cause. Cute, really. Which student did you see doing that? I'm not sure, but he was carving it into a tree. I told him to stop. Did you really? Why? Defacing public property. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. What's the punishment for that kind of thing nowadays? Prison sentence? Oh, it's usually a fine. All right. What about defiling public liberty? Does that carry a fine too? Oddly enough, the student in question argued a similar point. Is that something you encourage on the Atlas course? We encourage people who put ideas first and moral anachronisms second. The problem with the law, Inspector, is that it's out of date. Well, I suppose that's a matter of opinion. However, you still respect it. Respect it? I abide by it. We all play by the book, Inspector. But that's only because of the threat of possible incarceration. How well did you know Liam? Liam who? Liam, who took his life. Oh. Well, as far as I remember, he was a good student, confident, outgoing. You didn't notice any problems? I believe he had problems at home. Were you there when he died? Yes. Yeah. And afterwards? You didn't see him after the meeting? No. What was Liam like that night? No. Apart from being drunk, or possibly because of that, he seemed perfectly happy. He was drunk? Well, I assumed the bottle in his hand contained whiskey and not lemonade. 
Lots of similarities to Kate, don't you think? Drinking, depression, is that normal for the students? People come into the Atlas course for quick solutions to their problems. And when they don't get them as quickly as they might have liked, sometimes their impatience gets the better of them. Can you tell me a little about the Atlas phrase, free to be free? Where did you hear that? I was talking to one of your students. It's a little phrase we conjured up to summarize our objectives. What is your objective, if you don't mind me asking? Mine, or do you mean the course's objective? On the course. The objective of the course is to free people from bondage. We teach that most people are crippled by their past, by guilt, their attitudes, their beliefs, all that kind of nonsense. Guilt cripples people. Feeling guilty in business is like a meat eater feeling guilty in an abattoir. Guilt comes from the archaic emotional centers of the brain. It's a vestige of our animal ancestry, that's all. In business, you heed it at your peril. I'm sorry, Inspector. My house appears to be haunted. Would you mind closing the door? So, you believe that guilt has no place in business? None at all. I have few beliefs, Inspector, but that's one of them. And what if you have done something wrong? <laughs> well, that's the whole point. Guilt has nothing to do with it. Hmm. Interesting opinion. Know what this is, by any chance? I've no idea. Gardening isn't my kind of thing. Rebecca would probably know. I presume you've met Rebecca. Yes, I have. I'm sure she'd enjoy telling you what it is. She's the kind of woman who likes to feel superior. Would probably marry a millionaire and then decide to run her own pub. Yes, why was that? Well, she isn't exactly housewife material. She likes to be in control. Like why? Shame, isn't it, that I'm in control of both of them? Have you ever heard of Salvia Divinorum or Magic Mint? Sounds like it might be a drug. It's a hallucinogenic plant. Legal, as a matter of fact. I'm not a drug taker, Inspector. I have no enthusiasm voluntarily poisoning your brain. And you've never seen anyone on the course taking it? Well, if someone had, they wouldn't have done it openly. We don't allow drugs or alcohol on our course. We like to tell the students that success is the best drug. Whether you buy into that, of course, is another matter. <laughs> 